I'm Consuelo Cruz with the Office of Culture and Creative Services. Welcome to the Weekly Report. Sometimes artists aren't just confined to a painting on the wall. Sometimes they need the entire wall. The mural behind me is called Three Strong Women and it is one of many murals that are part of the international marketplace, also known as the Northeast Community. The mural is done by Zach Lehman and it depicts three women of the Northeast all from different countries. One from Somalia, one from Mexico, and one from Vietnam. Each of the women are accompanied by birds that reflect their country of origin. The historic Northeast is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Kansas City, Missouri, and it is home to people from all over the globe. And that is represented in the multiple murals that are located almost on every corner that bring color and vibrancy to the community. One artist who's painted several murals in the community and also lives here is Hector Casanova, who's on the faculty at the Kansas City Art Institute. And I was born and I grew up in Mexico City, and I was surrounded by murals uh, all my life uh, because there was a, a, a very significant movement of mural arts in Mexico in the first half of the 20th century. Um, so I've always understood just the kind of subtle but very profound impact that being surrounded by uh, by art has on, on, on a community. So I decided to take that uh, kind of uh, impetus and bring it into my classes uh, at KCAI. This mural directly behind me uh, was done a few years ago as part of the Map It program here in Kansas City. Uh, it shows two plesiosaurs at the top of the food chain uh, in what is Kansas City now, but 60 million years ago. Uh, and uh, it's on the wall for this public pool building. So it's a kind of a thematically linked to uh, both today and the, the history of uh, what became our city. Um, and so as, as a mural artist, uh, it's been really great seeing this huge kind of blossoming of murals throughout Kansas City in general, but in the historic Northeast especially, uh, there's been murals that have been commissioned over this last couple of years. And, uh, being able to see this kind of influx of energy and color and art into a community that has so often felt neglected has been really rewarding and uh, it's amazing seeing just all of these uh, streets that had been gray before now being covered in art and uh, the diversity of the community being represented in the murals i think that uh, it, it really helps to create a sense of uh, civic cohesiveness and it just makes walking around a lot more rewarding and beautiful. Like being a pedestrian in the Northeast is a beautiful experience now because there's so much to look at. You can even get a map of the murals in the community at the Northeast Kansas City Chamber of Commerce building at 2657 Independence Avenue. Over 20 murals are included in the map and they will be part of a tour, a guided tour, that is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund that happens later in the year. You can even go online to access the map at nekcchamber.com. In observance of the Labor Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, September 2nd. Trash collection will be delayed by one day that week. Thank you for watching the Weekly Report. I'm Consuelo Cruz with the Office of Culture and Creative Services. Stay tuned to see what's happening in other city departments. When I'm on my motorcycle and I just want to get away, I go straight to Ward Parkway. It's beautiful. So great after a long day to have a place in Kansas City to actually go ride my motorcycle and to go relax and just get away from it all. You, you don't feel like you're in the city. You feel like you're out in the country. It's gorgeous. So come join me on Ward Parkway where KC plays. KC Water is about to begin a series of water main replacements in the Waldo area of South Kansas City to replace century-old pipes. On August 8th, KC Water held a public meeting to give homeowners and business owners an overall view of the project and let them know what to expect. Terry Thomas is one of the project managers. We're replacing at least 1% of our system per year. This particular project is a part of that overall program. And on this project, we're replacing 32,000 feet or roughly a little under six miles 
of our system. The Waldo Improvements Project is one of the largest water main replacement projects currently underway at Casey Water. So this is a large chunk of our project and it happens to be in one of the more highly visible areas in our city. Only specific mains will be replaced in the general area described as State Line Road to Flora Avenue, about five blocks east of Truce, and from West 65th Street to East 81st Street. The project will begin with construction at the intersection of 75th and Warnell. We're not only replacing our water distribution mains, but we're also replacing a very, very important transmission main in our system. It runs directly down 75th Street from State Line Road all the way to Truce. And this is very critical that we get this replaced so we can minimize future disruptions along this very busy street. While some lanes of traffic will be temporarily closed, the intent is to keep at least one lane of traffic in each direction open most times. Some Waldo residents, like Denise Vaughn, understand the need for change. And people are going to be inconvenienced, but it's got to be done. At the public meeting, customers reviewed plans and asked questions. Among them were concerns about traffic delays as well as speeding. They're, they're talking safety and I think that's really important and I hope people driving by on 75th Street kind of understand how dangerous it is for the workers, so, so that's important. Customers were also concerned about their driveways and the removal of meters from inside their homes. The contractor assigned to the project, Rodriguez Mechanical, assured them that notices would be sent on a regular basis to keep them informed of the schedule as well as water shutoffs. Hey, please be patient with us. Um, these Construction is temporary, but when you get the long-lasting effects of that fresh drinking water because we're fixing everything, you don't have to worry about your water being cut off in the middle of the day, in the summer because the water main broke, like that's the worst. So if we can fix that now uh, and you be patient with all the dirt and construction just for a little bit, then you'll be satisfied in the long run. Being born and raised here in Kansas City, one of the best places that we could go as youth was the park. It was just a free environment to actually go out and be yourself. I'm Wesley Hamilton. Come join me at Swope Park, where KC plays. It feels so good to be out here today, man, because actually I haven't been out here since I worked here when I was 14. The parks meant everything to us, man. My family reunions happened. The Swope Park, man, played a big part. So come join me at Swope Park, where KC plays. Tech Night. All right, everyone say KCPD. One, two, three. KCPD. <laughs> the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department has wrapped up its second annual Summer Youth Academy. More than 75 youngsters, ages 12 to 15, spent a week learning about the various careers in law enforcement. Sergeant Joe Bidiaco of the Human Resources Division organized the sessions. So basically it was to kind of get them exposed to what we do, why we do it, how we do it, and hopefully from that they can learn or, benefit or gain some respect for police officers, gain insight into what's going on. Because a lot of youth in that age range, either they'll see us in bad situations or they just see us driving around in a police car. So it's kind of give them an overview tour of the police department, different facets of it. And hopefully they learn something about police officers. They learn that they're people that they get dressed the same way they do and they can joke around, they can play around also. So basically I think it was a success. Um, 78 kids participated this year. I think they had a lot of fun. I hope they had a lot of fun. From feedback what I'm getting, it seems like they did have a lot of fun. The participants visited the crime lab, the police dispatch communication center, toured the training academy, got up close and personal with the tactical response team, K-9 unit, and mounted patrol. At the conclusion of the camp, the youngsters received their graduation certificates from Chief Richard C. Smith. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund program provides support to nonprofit organizations that promote Kansas City, Missouri neighborhoods through cultural, educational, ethnic, recreational, historic, and social activities, and also promote Kansas City, Missouri as a premier convention, visitor, and tourist destination and center. Last year, over $1.6 million was provided to nonprofits, and these activities range from 5K runs, sports tournaments, parades, festivals, pop-up performances to an entire season of performances, so there's quite a variety. We have summer workshops happening through September for any organization that is interested in learning about the application process. 
for returning applicants who want to learn about updates. We'll go over timelines, deadlines, requirements, and we'll also go over opportunities for marketing of events in the event that an organization is awarded funding. So I encourage folks to go to our webpage and sign up directly through links that are provided, and we hope to see you at an upcoming workshop. If you have received a ticket or citation, here are a few things you should know to help you better understand court operations and to know what to expect when going to court. All rise. You may plead guilty or not guilty. If you decide to plead guilty and your ticket is payable and does not require a mandatory court appearance, you may either pay online, pay by mail, or pay in person at the Violations Bureau on the first floor of Kansas City Municipal Court. You also may choose to go to court rather than pay the fine ahead of time. If your case requires a court appearance or you decide to go to court, the hearing time, date, and courtroom are printed on the top of the ticket and on the summons you receive by mail. Be sure to arrive early, about 30 to 45 minutes before your scheduled hearing. This will give you enough time to go through security. The court holds you responsible for being on time and present in court when your case is called. Do not bring weapons, tools, or aerosol sprays to municipal court. They are strictly prohibited and alcohol is not allowed anywhere on the premises. All prohibited items will be confiscated and the violator may be appropriately charged. The court will not store prohibited items for pickup, so it is best to leave these items at home or in your vehicle. Remember, the court is a place of business and visitors should wear clean, well-fitting clothing. Shirts and shoes are required. Please don't wear tank tops, flip-flops, or hats in the courtroom. Eating, drinking, and gum chewing are not allowed. Don't use cell phones or recording devices in court. Please do not approach the court clerk or prosecutor unless they specifically call you by name. Do not approach the judge until requested to do so. Listen carefully for your name to be called, and when in front of the judge, please stand quietly and attentive. When the judge asks you a question, answer only the question asked and answer as directly as possible. You may plead guilty, not guilty, or request a continuance. If a continuance is granted, write down your next court date. You should find slips of paper for this in front of you. It is important to us as a court to make sure that you are treated with equal justice, fairness, and impartiality. We believe that all who come here deserve to be treated with respect, and as well the court requests that you treat the court with respect with regards to its proceedings and the other citizens. Thank you. In the beginning, it was simply a dream to have a city within a park, starting with less than 10 miles of boulevards and 300 acres of parks and green space. Today, Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has 221 parks spanning more than 12,000 acres. And more than 100 miles of scenic boulevards and parkways crisscrossing the city and 48 fountains. Hundreds of athletic fields for all kinds of fun. 106 playgrounds, 13 spray grounds, swimming pools, and eight museums. Casey Parks includes 122 monuments and sculptures to beautify the scenery. Ten community centers, each designed to represent their neighborhoods. And let's not forget five public golf courses. Because actually I haven't been out here since I worked here when I was 14. This is today's Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation. Your Casey Parks, where Casey plays.